guys and welcome back to Keep Smiling Adventures and today I thought I would do a little bit of a update bike check video of the Sonda Camino Titanium as a few things have changed on it and then also at the end of the video we're gonna take a look at what I carried and how I basically approached setting up the bike and with bags, food etc for doing the King Alfred's Way in one consecutive ride. Right, let's get into it. Okay, so quickly, for the people that haven't watched that previous video, let's go over the bike and the things that it haven't changed. So the bike is still obviously the Sonda Camino Titanium frame. That is the extra large version and it's a 60 centimeter. It's Sonda's original first version. So it has a quick release dropout on the rear. Um, on the front, it's a Salkoff carbon fork and that is a through axle fork. The group set is still the SRAM Force group set from the brakes, the rear mech and the chain set. Everything still SRAM Force. I'm still running the Ritchie Ventramax 44cm bars on this bike. The, and the saddle is a Pro Logo saddle. I'm not 100% sure the exact model. So that is everything that has remained the same since I originally built this bike. But a few things have changed so let's go over them right now. But as I'm riding this bike primarily off-road right now, I decided to drop from my whopping massively long 130mm ITM carbon stem um, to a 115mm DIDA stem. Um, it's just an aluminium one, it was kind of cheap, um, but it works well. Having that little bit of a shorter reach off-road definitely helps. The, the 130mm just did not work for me when I was off-road. So another thing I changed on this bike was the gearing because off-road I just needed that slightly easier gear so I dropped from a 46 tooth chainring to a 42 tooth chainring and that gives me an easiest gear of a 42 42 um, which is working pretty well. There's still I have considered maybe dropping down to a 40 but 42 seems to be fine especially when I need to then put the road wheels back on and go on a little road ride. It's not too spinny, especially when the bike is fully loaded. So 42, 42 is working out pretty nicely for me. So one big difference on this bike now is I've decided to change the wheels. Now, typically when I was doing off-road rides as an actual gravel bike, I would typically just run it with a halo aluminum clincher built on an SP Dynamo hub and then on the rear was a fulcrum aluminium wheel. Nothing too expensive just because they get bashed around a lot off-road and I didn't want the expense of having to replace expensive wheels. Now I have since decided screw that and I'm just going to use my nice carbon wheels that were typically going to be reserved for the road but now I, I don't care because I just wanted the nice wheels on the bike and honestly it makes such a difference. So the wheels are now um, in gravel setup. Is a prime carbon clincher setup tube. This is a 50 millimeter deep section carbon rim built onto a 3T hub. Now on the front I actually have my old, very old Reynolds Ass Assault rim that I have now rebuilt onto another SP Dynamo hub and that is carbon tubeless and it's just such a great rim. So the big change on this bike was the tires. Now if you watch my previous attempt at doing the King Alfred's Way in one day you'll know that I was having tire issues. I tried to uh, wing it and they already had like plugs in and they weren't like staying up properly. Um, so I really wanted to get some new tires. Now, in the UK right now, bike parts are quite hard to come by and that meant I was limited to what I could get and I did really want the Maxxis Ramblers and I got the Maxxis Ramblers. However, Sonda claim the Sonda Camino titanium frame at least can only take up to 700 by 45 millimeter tires. Now I could not get the Maxxis Ramblers in 45 anywhere. So I decided to risk it with the 50s, hoping, fingers crossed, that they would fit. And 
Well, they do just about fit. The space is a little bit tight. I typically only really use it on like the dry off-road conditions. If it was really wet, I'd be going for the bomb track. So I have managed to get the Maxxis Ramblers 700 by 50 into the Sonda. Um, you'll be able to see roughly the space, but it is possible and they work really well. Going from a 43 millimeter tire to a 50, it does feel big, but it does not feel slow on the road and it just fulfilled me with so much more confidence while riding off-road. The 220 miles of riding them, they were absolutely perfect. Um, so much more confidence and not one puncture in that 220 mile ride, especially through the night where I couldn't really see too much and I was picking my lines um, with not too much vision and I probably hit some lines a bit rough but they held up perfectly and I'm very, very impressed with their Max's Ramblers at 50. I wish I had gone to 50 a lot sooner. Okay, so that is a bit of an updated bike check of the Sonda and how I'm now setting it up for the gravel, um, for the off-road adventures. So I think let's go on to how I decided to set this bike up for riding the King Alfred's Way in a non-stop one ride challenge. So my main aim with this was to keep the bike as close to just a normal, no bags, as unloaded as possible. And luckily, obviously, I did not need to carry any sleeping gear because I was just going to be riding continuously. So basically, I used the Rafa bar bag for food this basically the main pocket just had food and what i ate was well you know what i eat ginsters pies mainly um and some brownies uh, that i was snacking on that was the main pocket that was basically all it was reserved for was food whatever i could carry in there in the little front pocket i carried my allen keys um, my pump and some tubeless um, repair kits and also there's some puncture repair kits in there and a lighter so that was the bag that I took on the bar and yeah it works really well for that sort of thing it's lightweight it's small it doesn't weigh basically anything and I was able to keep enough food in there to basically get me around until the shops were around. Okay, so the next bag I actually put on my bike and obviously I wanted to keep it small, but I do need to carry a few things. And I didn't want to stuff all my jersey pockets with them. So on this trip, I took a little tiny power bank. It's a really, really cheap one, but this was just to charge the Wahoo. I know I have a Dynamo hub and I could have just technically charged from my Dynamo hub directly into my Wahoo and kept that charged all the time. And ideally that would have been what I would have done, but I was using the out front mount for the Wahoo Roam. And for some reason, when they designed this, they made it basically impossible to plug the Wahoo in while actually mounted in the out front mount. For a company that claimed this is for adventures, I think that's a, a big oversight on their part because, yeah, you need to be able to charge while you're using the mount. On trips in the past, I've put it on their little puck mount on the stem, but I always find when it's on the stem, it always feels a bit too down and it's just, uh, yeah, it just kind of hurts my neck after a long time. So having it on the out front mount is where I want it, but I just can't charge it. So I actually had to stop every now and again um, to charge it. Obviously it's got a good battery life, um, so I only had to do that a couple times, but yeah, it was a bit of a pain. So what else did I carry in this bag? One thing you'll, you'll know if you watch the video is that I was quite thirsty and I ran out of water. And I did take my filter, the Catatin B3 water filter, but unfortunately on, on the King Alfred's Way, there just is not that many places to get water, um, especially once you get to like the Salisbury Plain all the way to Goring pretty much. You don't have anywhere to get water. So I unfortunately didn't actually get to use that um, and I was just quite thirsty. My keys, 
just the basic stuff. Uh, uh, iPhone cable for my phone and also an inner tube, which I actually took two inner tubes. One was in my jersey pocket, one was in this bag. And just a spare GoPro battery. And that is everything. Here's the Lifeline Top Tube bag, the extra large version. The only two bags I put on my bike, um, I wanted to keep it as close to a normal bike as possible, so it felt good on the trails and I could push myself a bit to go faster and not have to worry too much. So I took two bottles, about one and a half liter of water. Um, it was just about enough. It was probably bordering on not quite enough. So maybe I should get a slightly bigger bottle, maybe take that to two liters on the bike when doing a trip like that next time. So there's just one thing left that I had to consider while doing the King Alfred's Way in one day, and that was the lights. Now I knew that I was definitely gonna be hitting the night. Um, it was gonna be dark. Them nights are drawing in a lot sooner than they were in the summer. I hate it. But so the lights I basically went with were pretty standard commuting lights because basically that's all I have. So for the rear light, I used a Moon Comet X rear light. Now I wasn't too concerned about having an amazing rear light um, for this trip because I am off road and it wasn't too important to have a rear light. Um, but obviously it does go on the road sometimes so I did need to have one. Um, this light is still very nice and bright. It's not gonna look it on this camera, but yeah, it worked very well and it, for the most part, I kept it off when I was off-road and when I got to a road, I just turned it back on and it lasted the whole night. I think it's got a run time of about six to eight hours. Um, so yeah, it worked well. But the front lights were obviously the most important. I needed a bit to see what I was going into. I basically had to use two lights, two moon meteor front lights. Now these are brilliant lights. They're not really designed for off-road mountain biking. Putting these two lights together and combining their strength, they were actually plenty bright enough to see the trail enough. So when if things were getting really technical on some descents when I needed to see, I would put them into full power mode, both of them, and that was actually plenty bright enough to be able to see. The only issue I really had was that ideally when you're mountain biking off-road you kind of want a helmet light just so you just actually where you're looking is you can still see because sometimes the bike is sort of pointing a different way um yeah so it did work ideally i would have had a helmet light but two moon meteor lights did do did work pretty well. That was the light that I used. Guys, I am trying to hit 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year, so it would be great if you would consider subscribing. And until next time, keep smiling, enjoy the adventure, peace.